see you all here tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And uh, I have a special speaker tonight. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But I have never met this man before. So uh, I can tell you, he, I guess he's from Greensboro. Yes, sir. Right? And kind of traveling back and forth between North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, we got a friend of his here tonight, <laughs> Brother David Johnson from Rocky Mount. Amen. And Lord, amen. Brother, maybe I ought to get you to introduce him. Since you know him a little better, right? Would you mind doing that? I can do that for you, brother. Amen. This is Brother uh, David Johnson from the church in Rocky Mount. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lord, amen. Uh, youth minister there. Amen. We're glad to have him tonight. Praise yes. God. Amen. So, Brother so Johnson, why don't you just come introduce uh, Brother Shaw here tonight. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, everyone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here tonight. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do in our midst. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have a great man of God before us tonight. Uh, Brother Charlo is a great man of God. He Amen. pastors and Norfolk, Virginia, in the Tidewater area, a great church there, Amen. and he's just a man after God's own heart. Amen. He Praise loves God. souls, and he loves God's people, and I believe that what he gives us tonight is going to be from the Lord. Amen. 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 So let's clap our hands for Brother Charles. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Amen. Tell him thank you. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Shall we praise him and tell the Lord thank you? He's good. His mercy endured forever. His truth endured to all generations. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I come to have church tonight. Praise God. Amen. I come to have church tonight. Praise God. God is good. All the back roads I've been through to get here. Amen. I'm sure. Praise God. I expect nothing less for God to move. We started out on 85, and it took us a back way. And I said, well, the GPS is going to reroute us and keep rerouting us if we don't take this back way. Amen. But we made it here, and we're glad. Praise God. I'm normally not one to be late. My wife could tell you she's a, that I'm a stickler for time. Praise God. But we're here. We're on the Lord for Brother Vic. Amen. On today, God bless you, sir. It's good to meet you. Amen. We walked into a beautiful spirit of worship. Amen. I thank God for my friend, Brother Johnson, being here today. He's a brother beloved. Amen. And my lovely wife and daughter are here today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We've been married for five years. Amen. Our daughter will be three in June. Amen. And we praise God for her. My wife, amen, is a ministry and she's a preacher. Amen. And prophet is in her own right. I'm going to let her come and just say something to you. She's normally behind the scenes. Amen. But she's going to greet us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. She knew that. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Just thank Lord. God for being here. Give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Give honor to Pastor Levesque. Give honor Praise to, God. of course, my husband, Bishop Charlotte, to Ella Johnson. Give honor to everyone in the building. I just thank God for being here. I just thank God for being saved, Amen. sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, Praise and God. fire baptized. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm just grateful to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise I just thank God. God just for the Holy Ghost. You know, it's just a couple of things we've been witnessing lately, and I just thank God for my mind just to be saved. You know, I, I see a lot that goes on, especially if you're looking on social media at any given time, and I, it's just like people just don't want to do right. They just refuse anything that's got to do with God. They just want to reject it. But I just thank God because anything that he tells me to do, I'm going to do it just because I love him that much. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. And that's just what I believe. I'm going to keep every commandment that he gives me, whether it's in the Bible or a spoken word. I'm going to keep every commandment that he gives me. And y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. I mean, if you just want me to take the text tonight, yeah. amen, I'll be <laughs> more than confident to sit down. But amen. We're going to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. How many of y'all know the word of the Lord? Amen. The Bible says if you eat the word, it'll do you good. Amen. amen. And every word of God is right. It's given to us by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. 13th verse 
Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I would sing a little bit for you tonight. I'll, I'll let that rest. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, put your hands together. And all he has done for me. You know my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Oh, I praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, you know my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Oh, I praise God for saving me. You know the windows of heaven are open and the fire is falling tonight. Oh, I have joy, joy, joy down in my soul since Jesus made everything right. You know I gave him my own filthy garments and he gave me a robe of pure white and now I'm feasting on manna from heaven and that is why I'm happy tonight First Thessalonians 4 and 13 Amen He says but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Yes. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, which we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Yes. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm gonna ask Brother Johnson to pray, amen, oh, over this amen. word tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your spirit, Lord. Spirit, Lord. Lord we ask that you have your way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, by your spirit, Lord God, have your way in the name of Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. I want to talk to you from the subject tonight. Where will you be when the church leaves the earth? Where will you be when the church leaves the earth? With all the signs of the coming of the Lord that are taking place with such stunning accuracy and precision. The Bible records that one would have to be willingly ignorant to ignore the signs of the return of the Lord. How many of y'all really believe that Jesus is coming back soon? Amen. Yeah. Let me see about a show of hands. These things that are happening are no longer happening in secret, but they're happening before our very eyes. That's right. That's right. If you pay attention to the newspaper, and if you pay attention to the internet, they have all types of activity happening in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere. There are things that are coming close to earth but just barely missing earth if you will there are things that uh that have been found on mars that looks like some type of wreckage have taken place i come to tell somebody that these things are leading up to the return of the lord jesus christ and i don't know about you but i'm excited and i'm looking to go back with jesus when he returns I'm not setting up my home here on earth to dwell here forever. This is the problem in the modern day church. In modern day society, we believe that we are going to, number one, live forever. And we believe that, number two, that we are never going to die. But 
I come to let somebody know tonight on Everlasting Lane that you are not everlasting. Right. Hallelujah. You have an expiration date. And whether you go by the grave or whether you go by the sky, we are getting ready to get up out of here. Come on, clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Every time you wake up in the morning and you see that extra wrinkle up under your eyes, that ought to let you know that time is winding up. I had to get a tooth extracted late last year, and I said, this is signs of aging. <laughs> you have a few more back aches than normal, and, and you have a few more amen, aches in your knees than normal. This is, these are signs that, that time just may be winding up for you. I find myself lately saying that I'm not as young as, as I used to be. Amen. We took a trip last week to Houston to bury a friend of mine's mother. And, and I'm not too keen on the airplane, so we drove all the way from Greensboro to Houston. And I used to be able to drive from Texas to Michigan in 15, 18 hours. But now it takes a day and a half for me to get there because I'm just getting flat out older. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight? What I'm trying to admonish you on tonight is that you don't have a lot of time to waste doing the things that you are doing and being involved with the cares of this world. This world is going to be swallowed up and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth created and I come to tell you that I don't want to live in hell and then die and go to a devil's hell, but I got to do what I have to do now in order to be raptured to go back with Jesus when he comes. Clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. With all of the signs that are in the air, you would think that the church would be more on alert, Brother Levette, that this thing is really getting ready to take place. Now you used to be able to tell the people that really love God from the people who were just playing with God. But now you go into some churches, you don't know who loves God or who is there for their own engrandizement. And I come to tell somebody tonight, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about your position, but it's about Jesus Christ. And I got to keep my focus on Jesus Christ. Can I preach on tonight? I got to keep my focus on the Lord Jesus Christ because he's coming for a church in Ephesians 5. 27 says he's coming for a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle. The church has become so comfortable. We have settled in to our programs. We've settled in to our agenda. And, and the saints have gotten comfortable with the cares of life. I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember when Pentecostals didn't, everybody in the church didn't have a car to come to church. But now that everybody has a car, they find everything else to do but come to church. Yeah. Got time to do nothing, but you ain't got time to do something. Yeah. But that was a day in time where people would be obligated to come to church because it was just in their DNA. But because we're living in an era of moral decline, People have no respect or reverence for or fear of God anymore. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. It used to be when the man walking by the church, if he was smoking a cigarette, I grew up in Houston, Houston, Texas. If, if he was smoking a cigarette, he would put the cigarette out. But now they blow smoke toward the doors. Come on, somebody. We're living in a day of moral decline. It used to be if they were cussing, they would they would stop cussing because they were walking by the church. But because we're living in a day of moral decline, they'll cuss right in the middle of the sanctuary. Something is wrong with us. Yeah. 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 Right. The Bible says that one would have to be willingly ignorant not to see the dramatic changes that have taken place in the landscape of the world. We have misappropriated natural things over spiritual things. Yeah. Amen. This is what happened in Israel. They, they wanted a God uh -huh. 
the, 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 the prophets of Baal wanted a God that didn't make rules. Yeah. That, 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 that had eyes but could not see. Amen. Are you hearing me on today? Amen. But Elijah said, you can call on your God. I'm going to call on the God that answers by fire. Amen. What am I talking about tonight? Amen. If you're going to live for God in this day and time, you got to get with the program and stick with the scripture. Let me move on from here. So we, we have misappropriated natural things over spiritual things. Uh -huh. But I want to be in the spirit of God. Amen. I want to live in the spirit of God. I want to walk in the spirit of God. I want God to have complete rule and control over me. It's not about me, but it's about your will for my life. And I don't want to do anything without consulting your will for my life. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added up to you. Come on, somebody. We got to get back to seeking God. We got to get back to consulting with God and pray to God. God, if it's your will, let it happen. But if it's not your will, let me know. Because I don't want to be out of your will. Can we lift our hands and worship him? Come on, praise him now. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Some of you say, well, I don't have I don't have a golden image set up for God. I don't pray to a statue, but some of you pray to your house. You take care of your house more than you take care of your spirit, man. Come on, somebody. Some of you, your your God is your car. Yeah. If that car ain't vacuumed and, and detailed on Saturdays, then your whole week is thrown off. Hear me on tonight. That you see my 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 deal. I wanted my car to be just right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of you are worshiping your job more than you are worshiping God. That's right. Amen. What if you were faithful to prayer? Yeah. One hour a day. Oh, every day. Hallelujah. And faithful to fasting one day a week. Every week. Could you imagine the miracles that will take place in your life? Could you imagine your family coming in and being saved if you would devote time to seeking the face of God? But we're so encumbered with the cares of life. I'm so busy. I got school. I got, I got work. I got, I got my wife. I got my husband. I got my daughter. That we're not taking our time to say, Lord, I just want your will for my life. Amen. How many of y'all want his will tonight? Amen. I'm not going to be before you long, but I really, I really want his will. I'm going after somebody tonight that has been misappropriating natural things over spiritual things. Tonight is your night to get into the spirit. Tonight is your night for a breakthrough tonight. If you really want God to do something for you, tonight is going to be a great night for you. I believe God is going to change some situations and some circumstances because you came to church tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. So what should we be doing? We should get busy doing something for God. Amen. How many of y'all have witnessed to somebody this week? Don't feel bad. I ain't witnessed to nobody this week either. Why? Because we're so busy. But the Lord told me to tell the saints and to tell myself, get busy doing something for God. Don't be found sleeping on the job. Amen. Mark 13, 35. Therefore keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows at dawn if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. He said, what I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch. What are you looking for? I'm looking for his coming. I'm looking for his return. Blessed are those that await his coming. Blessed are those that are awaiting something to happen. They have not built their treasures here on earth, but they have stopped y'all and said that to me tonight. I'll start up something so that when he comes back, my spirit can be quickened and I can go with him in the middle of the air. Amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost tonight, 
Tonight is a good night to get the Holy Ghost. That same spirit that quickened Jesus, the Bible says, is going to quicken your mortal body. He said, and we shall be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of the eye, we shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm tired of living down here. I want to go to heaven. Yes, amen. Come on. I pray for God to arrest somebody tonight. Some of us don't want to go to heaven. We've, we've become comfortable. And can I tell you something? Brother Levesque, a lot of people don't believe that there's a literal hell, but there's a literal hell. And I got to tell you that if you don't live right, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you have not been baptized in the water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hell will be your portion. I wouldn't sit on the sidelines of revival, but I will jump in the water while the water is troubled. Tonight is a night for God to say, Lord, help me. He's calling somebody tonight. I've met people that said, my pastor never talked about hell. My pastor never said, told us that there was a literal hell. He just told us that God was going to bless us with a new house and a new heart. Well, tonight, I don't have that type of message. I'm telling you, get right or get left behind. Where will you be when the church leaves the earth? Will you be standing on the sideline waiting to go? Or will you be caught up with Jesus to meet him in the air? Tonight, we have to put God back in our service. Oh, yes. God. I'm not talking about Ronald Grabbins. I'm talking about Virginia. Right. I need God to move in Virginia. I need a revival in Virginia. Come on, somebody. It's some souls down there that God has to pull out. But if the people in the pews are not right, if the people, amen, that call themselves saints are not living holy, then, then we have a problem. The God told me to tell you tonight to amp up on your praise, to amp up on your worship. Amen. You ought to be shouting and worshiping and rejoicing. Hallelujah. Because you have a heavenly hope. Clap your hands and tell them thank you. Help us to know. Worship. Somebody say, I live a lifestyle of worship. That sounds good. And I'm almost done. Somebody say, I live a lifestyle of worship. When I was younger, I've been preaching since I was five. That's a lot of years this year. But when I was younger, I could preach for hours on the end. I never want to stop. But right now, I want to quit because I feel like God's going to do something at the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. But worship is not my lifestyle. No, 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 no. See, you can pick and choose a lifestyle. Yeah. But worship is my life. For it's in him that I live, breathe, and move, and have my being. This is my life. My walk with God is my life. I don't have a church face and an at-home face and a work face. Do the people on your job know that you're saved? Do the people on your job know that you love God? Are you just blending in? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. Say to God, I ought to stand out. Amen. They look at my wife on the job and they ask, when we were working in the public sector, they ask, <laughs> Where'd you come? There's something different about you. Amen. When folks look at me, I want them to see the anointing. I want them to know they can come to me with prayer. Amen. Because that one prayer could be the spark of revival in their whole family. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 1 and 8. For I reckon that the sufferings of our present time Go ahead. are not worthy to be to the glory that's going to be revealed. How's the glory going to be revealed? It's going to come when he comes back. There's going to be a glory that you've never experienced before. But he said, I want you to experience glory right here on earth before I come back. You know, you can recognize a church, a real church is a praising church. A real church is a worshiping church. A real church is a